All right, let's do um, our prospect profile now because I think it's a good one and I want to give it some time. Um, this one at special request from Evan, who is looking forward to drafting this player multiple times in every mock draft. None other than Anton Lundell out of Finland. Brad, you kick us off. Ah, the age old argument of production versus the eye test. And Anton Lundell, when you watch him play hockey, you'll never hear the word exciting. You'll never hear the word flashy. But as an 18-year-old in Liga, one of the top leagues in the world last year, he put up 28 points in 44 games. That's not far off Barkov, Line A type production in that league. I think... Obviously, Lundell's a late birthday. I can't remember if Barkov and Line were. But he he produces. He's got a great 200-foot game. Good shot. Not an overly amazing skater, but not poor. Great positionally. Good passer. He, he's kind of... It, it sells him short, but I always describe like describing Lundell as the jack-of-all-trades, master of none. There's really no part of the game that I would classify him as poor. Obviously, he has his strengths, which to me would be his vision, IQ, and shot, but he, he's not bad at anything I didn't mention. So he's one of those guys that you can project pretty safely into an NHL lineup, probably as a middle six center. Um, where that ceiling is, I don't know. I don't think it's crazy high, but I think he could play. Like if everything goes, I always hate these hyper probably comparisons, but if everything goes exactly right for Anton Lundell, you see a lot of Patrice Bergeron in him. Not saying he will be Patrice Bergeron, but if you get 90% of Patrice Bergeron out of that, that's a home run pick in the 10 to 15 range. So I don't know. Lundell intrigues me. I like him a lot. I like smart players like him. I wish he'd flash a bit more skill than he does, but I mean, he's producing in one of the top men's leagues in the world already. And one of the crazy things um, for HIFK's upcoming season, he's been named an assistant captain of that team. Yeah, this is a guy who I think a lot of people are pushing really hard to not discount. They they talk about a ceiling not being as low as people might want to make it. Um, I don't think he's like... You know, this guy at best is a third line center. I don't think he'll turn it to Patrice Bergeron, but that's not the comparison Brad is making. He's, he's doing that thing we do on this podcast where we say, you know, if everything goes right, this guy reaches his maximum potential. That might be what you, you get. And that, I, to me, that just signals that this is a guy who's responsible in almost every facet of his game. Um, a lot's been made of his skating. I don't think it's that bad. Um, a lot has been made of his, you know, offensive instinct in terms of he doesn't quite always turn it on but i've seen a lot of skill from him um it's not what he it's not like the the high point of his game i think jack of all trades master of none was a perfect assessment from brad um middle like let's say detroit drafted him i don't think you're looking at a guy who's likely to be better than larkin but he'd be hell like one hell of a second line center if he did pan out and that is a pretty great pick to make in the range where anton lundell is going to go which i think is anywhere from like uh, 8 to 15, I think it's a safe range for him. I think he slots in nicely there. I think that makes sense as to um, why he's he, – like, like I, I think that makes sense compared to like his skill and his ability and what he's done. He might not jump out at you, but you look at what he's accomplished at a young age in a pro men's league in Finland, like Brad mentioned, and it's it's impressive. You can't look past it. He might not you know knock your socks off every single night, but at the same time – I don't know. He's displayed enough for me to to feel really confident if I'm one of those teams that doesn't have the luxury of picking, you know, all the way up to like Rossi or Holtz or, or the end of that tier. Lundello is a great player to pick in there. And if he's playing center, that does add value to it. I know a lot of people don't necessarily think so, but I, I think this is a guy who who does project as a center. Yeah, you guys essentially covered it all. I think he's like one of the safest picks in the top 15. Uh, obviously, Alexi Lafreniere in the top four are ultra safe picks, but I think his game transitions well enough to play in the bottom six, but he also has a little bit of top six potential as well. So very high floor ceiling, kind of a bit of a question mark, but if you're a team and everything, every, 
in the draft and all the players before have been picked. He could be a very good piece to add uh, some depth in your prospect pool. I also noticed something in his game. Um, I, this was pretty early on, and I just didn't really focus too much on it. But then I saw that Scott Wheeler mentioned it in his um, his write ups, and he he noticed he had a little bit of a funny skating stance, and it's one that could be improved on if he spent some time with a skating coach, or um, you know, a lot of teams will focus on that kind of thing. And and you know for a fact that teams who are looking to pick this guy in that range are saying. Yeah, Anton Lundell might be a, a top five or six worthy pick that we're going to get at 11 or 13. Um, we just have to get a skating up to scuff. So it's almost good news when you have a guy who has like average to like, I don't know, passable skating, but then you find out that they have a funny stance. It's essentially unlock speed. You get them to convert their, their skating, their strides into more power and less into, you know, wacky sideways movement, then, then you can, make more of that player so that's what people are talking about when they talk about improving skating it's not it's easier said than done not everyone can do it a lot of it's muscle memory and some people just don't have the physical ability to do it um but that's potentially something that they might be able to get more out of him from and and like i mentioned before i don't think his his offensive ability is so invisible where it's not worth mentioning he's responsible in his own zone i don't think his ceiling is as high as the, the top six or seven um but i don't think it's terribly far off the right system, I can see this guy being a fantastic pick. Anyways, yep. um, where do you think he goes? I think he's going to go in the 10 to 12 range personally because um, there's such a diverse cluster of players in that range. You can you know, look at your small, high-skill forwards. You've got Lundell, the more reliable two-way center you've got maybe your jake sanderson your askarov in that range so it's just going to be whatever flavor the team's looking for so and obviously a two-way center appeals to a lot of teams so basically from buffalo on i could see every team in that range taking a long look at lundell he was mocked pick 13 to carolina so we're we have him below the askarov line which is pick nine to minnesota Okay. I don't know. I think I think in reality he's probably going to go before Quinn or Jarvis. I likely just because teams value him a little more, and it's not like a crazy center heavy draft either. So, yeah, no. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say because like Sanders Askarov to Minnesota and Sanderson to Winnipeg at nine and ten respectively makes a lot of sense, right? But those are both guys who teams could reach heavy for. I can't in my in in my like heart of hearts say that any team above them should be taking those guys, but this is the NHL draft. It's completely unpredictable, and if a team is hot to trot on their goalie of the future, or they think Jake Sanderson is an even better prospect than Jamie Drysdale, they'll go in the top five or six. Absolutely, they will, and we'll all be shocked. And some team will get a steal, and in five years we'll say that's a fantastic pick, or wow, that was idiotic from the start. That's just the way it goes. Red Wings fans, well, <laughs> that's what we're doing now with Moritz Cider. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just, that's the kind of thing that's going to affect Lundell a lot. Like, there's just too much traffic ahead of him. Otherwise, you would see him move up. Strong, it's a strong draft. I know we've repeated that over and over ad nauseum. It is a really, really strong draft. And he is a victim of that, if you want to call it that. Is that, which pick? Uh, of Carolina's is Toronto's. It's not pick 13, is it? Yep. It's pick 13? Yep. There's a chance Sanderson's available at 13, and who would be better for Toronto than Jake Sanderson right now? Oh, God. I don't think Sanderson gets that far. I don't don't think so, but it's not crazy. Oh, it's not crazy at all, but would not put money on the table for that to happen. Anyhow, um, Thanks for tuning in to the Winged Wheel Podcast. Be sure to check out wingedwheelpodcast.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll also find links to other ways to support the show, such as Patreon, official podcast apparel, and more. And don't forget to follow the show on Twitter at Winged Wheel Pod. And of course, the hosts at Brad Crisco, at Ryan Hanna WWP, and at Hockey Town Evan.